start off start off by talking about what is the prostate and for males this is located right around it wraps around which is just below the bladder and um, it's in front of the rectum so normally when persons are having prostate issues they feel a pain some pains in their bottom yes because it's right in front of the rectum and it is the size of a walnut it is very small right and it surrounds the urethra and this is the, the part where when you're urinating urine <clears throat> the urine goes through all right so um so the, it produces the fluid and that makes up a part of the steam right right That's so, great. so um that is the prostate and bph or benign prostatic hyperplasia this occurs when the um, prostate that is enlarged right so this happens when it, it gets bigger and remember where it's located it's located where men Below the bladder in front of the rectum. And it surrounds the urethra. So just think about it. When this happens, when when this growth occurs, it's hard to urinate. We're gonna go through the cause, but it will be hard to too, I'm sorry, it will be hard to urinate. Um urine on your pants after you finish, right? So as it reads on um, the slide. And this is a very common condition happening to men over 40. But nowadays you have men in their 30s with um, BPH, which is a big deal. All right, so um, this is due to hormonal changes and we'll go some more into details on what this hormonal change um, entails. All right, so as it, as um, some symptoms decrease urine, so you go to the you go to the bathroom. You go to the bathroom. You're trying to urinate, but it's very very hard, <clears throat> right? Um, because remember, it's this. Just picture this as your urethra, as the, the 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 picture above. The normal. You see, the, there's a space there so that the pee can flow from your bladder. But in the enlarged, under the enlarged, or above the word enlarged, you see where the prostate has become so huge. So it literally blocks off the, the way um, where the urine would flow from the bladder, right? So you'll have so many different things like um, the rates. So if you find that you go into the bathroom and you're not spraying, you should spray, right? Yes. <laughs> when you're urinating, it should have a force. So if you're, you're going, the, yes, <laughs> yes, it's great. So it's not a jet stream anymore, but a trickle. But if you realize that that sudden change, something might be wrong. You might the prostate might be getting bigger, right? Um, trouble when you empty your bladder. So after you finish urinating, um, you still feel like some urine is in the bladder, right? Or some men you can see it on the pants because they finish emptying, and you know when they put it up, you still it drains out because they can't they can't help it, right? So these are signs that something is going on with the prostate. Right, and sometimes you can have increased frequency of urine. You always feel like you want to go to the bathroom because this, the, whenever you have any backlog of urine in the bladder, you more than likely will develop a uh, infection, like a bladder infection, or sometimes you get infection, which is bad. So this is something that you can play around with, right? So um, some causes of BPH, um, it can be estrogen dominant. What do I mean by that? Our diet dictates, our, our diet causes so many 
many health issues, you know, um, when if you're not very careful with who you eat, as well as abiding to the laws of health. So if you're eating a lot of, uh, there is this, well, it's a fact that in animal rearing, at the end part of the process, they put a uh, estrogen um, patch behind their ears, and that will speed up growth, right? So instead of not putting the patch and you have a cow that is 100 pounds, I'm, I'm guessing. Uh, the volume is low. Is it better now? Yes. Um, so instead of having a cow that um, weighs 100 pounds, you can just put on the patch, the estrogen patch, and it goes to like maybe 120, as I'm saying, I'm assuming, right? But um, because of that, the estrogen that is in the meat, especially right before they are slaughtered, where does it go? It goes into our bloodstream. So you have men know that the estrogen level is way higher than the, the testosterone. And you have so many different issues um, happening. And of course, for the females, I don't want to go into the females, but you know that the estrogen feeds growth, um, whether fibroids. So yeah, PP cause so many different things, right? So for men, oh, eggs as well. Eggs are very, very high in estrogen. And milk, whole milk as well, very high in estrogen, right? And bovine growth hormones as well. Where they inject the cows, the cow odor is swollen. Then you have the pus and blood, everything going into that that cow pale pan. Yes. Yes. Right. So we have to be careful, um, not to, especially men and women as well, not to um take these food <laughs> right in. Um also low zinc. Low zinc is shown that persons with low zinc um, are prone to having a BPH or the prostate getting larger. So men, you need to be on your zinc, right? Lack of sleep. Lack of sleep is, I mean, if you're not sleeping as a man, no. By the time you reach maybe 40, more than likely you will have BPH. Um, benign prosthetic hyperplasia, which is the swelling of the prostate. Not only that, but BPH comes with impotence. And of course, men don't like that. So you need to sleep. You know what is impotence, everybody on here? All right, when they can't really maintain an inner erection. And of course, we that everybody here came through an erection, right? Yes, we're not shy about it. So it has, uh, it is a big deal. Right, so shall I? <laughs> All right, so age also affects, um, as you grow older, your bodily functions start degrading. And so of course, BPH develops, right? Stress increases what is called 5-alpha reductase. Um, that is the hormone that changes the testosterone to dihydrotestosterone. And too much dihydrotestosterone in your blood, it causes the increase, um, the increase of the, the size of the um, prostate. All right, so um, All right, so the symptoms, as I was explaining earlier, you have urinary issues. So when you have people say you have stoppage of water, it's the same thing where the prostate is too large and blocks the flow of urine and it blocks it, you have a backlog in the bladder. And sometimes if it's really bad, it goes up to the kidneys, which is dangerous, right? 
um, you pee regularly at night, so you call nocturia. Um, you have difficulty starting urination. Um, as I said before, weak urine flow or pain when urinating. Um, painful orgasms, back pain. Remember where the prostate is located right before the rectum. Yes, yeah, so you have back pain, severe back pain. And not a lot of men want to miss or if you have pain in your bottom. And because Jamaica is so homophobic, it's a good thing. But um, you then don't want to necessarily go to the hospital and say, you know, I have pain in my bottom. You know, but it's it's a real thing. Yes, brother Michael. Yes. Oh. Yes, so I have a question. Um, you spoke about difficulty urinating. So I start. Um, what if what if it's a guy who needs to shot? For example, you go into a, a bathroom and the six hundred men right beside you just can't pee because you you just feel mm -hmm. that's not a symptom, right? No. Okay. Once okay. it's a norm where you know that happens, you're good to go. Okay. Yeah. And if I go into a cubicle after, I'm good, but <laughs> Yeah, if you when you're by yourself and that happens, you're good. All right, blood in the urine. Um, if you find blood in your urine, of course, um, it won't be extremely ready, but a severe case it will be red. But once you realize that the urine color is out of your range of a normal urine color, even when you're dehydrated, once it is a like more orange or red, then you need to get checked up. Uh yes. Uh, yes, that's a thing for thing. Right? So if you used to be well on the, you know, well erected when you're beginning your stuff and you realize that it's not that um, immediate, then, uh, then you can get checked out as well. All right. So we're going to look at the herbs, the natural. Uh, natural ways to prevent benign prostatic hyperplasia. Um, yes, yeah, so there are natural ways because you have, yes, it's a sexual, right? You have different, you have drugs on the market like Proscar and um, another one. But the, the thing about them is that they, they cause impotence. So you're taking the drugs to help you with the prostate issues but then you can't function as a man, all right? So, yes, so that's where our great health message comes in, where we have um, these great herbs that you should use as um, prescribed and you will get the results. Because many persons, they start a herbal treatment and within five days, they're like, I'm not seeing the results. You know, what's going on? But you have to be consistent. Herb is not like drugs. Drugs, they work more immediate, but you have so many bad um, side effects, right? So, um, okay. yes, go ahead. Thing that you know, like talking about prostate is just for old men, so you know, younger men don't pay it any mind. And there's a yeah, I'm not talk to me about prostate, you know, my 25, my 30, or you know, leave me alone until I'm six, 60 or so. We talk about prostate, is, is that something that you know is helping to fuel this? I don't know, absolutely not. So, you should start your preventative methods from no, don't wait until um, you, you ha you're facing these symptoms. Also, I realize men are very shy when it comes to herbs that will help them in that in getting a stronger erection. But the thing about it is that prevention is better than cure. So you just start from now, right? Um, and from as young as you can start, you you start. Um, okay, so saw palmetto berries. Saw palmetto berries, uh, they are very, very, very good. Um, they are the actually the most studied out uh, 
herbs for the prostate, right? And as well as saw palmetto, the extract also is very, very good. And these reduce 5-alpha reductase. And 5-alpha reductase, um, this is the enzyme that actually changes the testosterone to dihydrotestosterone, which causes the increase in the prostate um, size. Right, so saw palmetto, let that be your best friend. Um, pigeum or pigeum, um, this is very, 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 very good. It not only helps with the prostate issues, but it helps with the um, urinary issues. Right, so um, if you have bladder, inf the in bladder infection that would be caused due to the stoppage of water or the blockage of water, Pygium is very, very, very good. And the powder, you know, um, just use it. So it says in one double blind study, an extract of pygium, 200 milligram a day for two months, was significantly more effective than placebo with respect to urinary frequency, urgency. So you, the, the, the need to always want to urinate um, this urea, which is pain when you're urinating, and the urinary flow rate, instead of it trickling, is shooting, right? Um, and you have uh, so many other studies which show that pigeum is a very, very good herb for that. Well, how do you get it, Kenil? <laughs> we get it at the health food store. <laughs> you can get it in a supplement form. All right, the health food store. <laughs> All right. Well, I've never seen it in the, well, I've never seen it in, I'm assuming it, it does. We always get the powder form, but I'm assuming it does come in the capsule. The flow, the, going back to the flow rate, Sister Shreese, you said that instead of it, um instead of it trickling and shooting, or is it the other way around? Is yes, it normal? Go ahead. Is it normal to trickle or the normal to shoot? It's normal to shoot. When it's trickling, it can be something with the prostate, some prostate issue, whether it's inflamed or it's, it's, it's growing, right? Okay. Yes. So, so pygium, it says that it is often used for treating urinary, dis urinary um, disorders. So, so then you also mentioned that um, prevention is better than cure. So, so for, for pygium especially, um, do you recommend that we maybe take that um, maybe uh, like a once a six months or once a year um, or not at all? Because it says it's for UTIs really. Yeah, um, you can take it for like two months. Uh, if you're going on a, any form of herb, well, not any form, but uh, the ones that I'm discussing now, um, two months, at least two months, you go on them. Um, so if you don't have those issues, but prevention, um, like for example, for Kenil, <laughs> like what I go like a week, a full week. So I give him for like a full week. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Oh, good stuff. I only can speak <laughs> so a full week and um, then a break, being that he doesn't have the issue. Right? Uh, so good shoe. Yes, go ahead. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. All right. So, oh, uh, saw palmetto, you have the, the berries and um, you have the extract from the berries, right? So you can eat the berries itself. If you have that in your region, Brother Michael, you can, so the berries, you can eat the berries itself if you have that in your region or the salt palmetto, they have the extract, um, which is very concentrated. So you can, the next yes. salt palmetto you see is the extract. That you so can get in supplements. Yes, go ahead, Sister Lo. Happy, happy Sabbath. Is there a picture of what the palm, the berries look like? I don't have one, no. But okay. yes, I can Google it. Or, Google yeah. it. All right. Thank you. Um, 
terms of things, zinc is a very big deal because, of course, you know that every ejaculation, um, you lose zinc, right? So it's good to get zinc, to top up on zinc, extra zinc as a man, um, so that it can help with the, help with the prostate. So prostate contains prostate contains high levels of zinc. So the little walnut cell shape um, gland that you have. It has a very high level of zinc. So when the zinc level decreases, um, then the prostate will grow. You know, it's more prone to, to grow. Um, pumpkin seed, yes, not daily on pumpkin seed, yes. Um, so zinc inhibits 5 alpha reductase and prolactin. And these are um, enzymes that trans. Uh, that transform the testosterone into dihydrotestosterone, which causes the size increase. Uh, all right, so get your zinc in. Pumpkin seed oil, it's, pumpkin seed oil is very concentrated, you know. So uh, I would say that you can get your pumpkin seed oil. And just a precautionary measure, I know some people have oily stomach, so if you, eat, if you drink oil, or like if you're taking the pumpkin seed oil straight, it settles on the stomach, you have oily bilge. Um, what you can do is when you're eating, you know, you don't know about oily bilge? After you, you eat a high, <laughs> a high, um, like if you, after you eat fatty foods, like if you eat fries and stuff, you just find yourself burping, burping, burping. Up. No? Nobody? Okay, great. You guys are, so. <laughs> Right, so um, you can eat it while chewing on your food, or you can sprinkle it over your food and have it. And that's one teaspoon. One teaspoon of the oil, and you drink, and you use that daily for at least two months. Be consistent. You don't have to have prostate issues, but use it. Prevention is always better than cure, right? Stinging nettle. And while doing a presentation the other day on this same topic, one of my church brothers said, Sister Shreese, you know what is thing in that? Who knows? Cowich. Yes, I didn't know. Cowich. You know Cowich? No. The one was when you when it's, it's scratch, you scratch down. Yeah. You have to you, you don't know Cowich? No? Yeah, man. If you live a bush or country, just yeah, they're normally there. And if it touches you, you just scratch and you find yourself maybe breaking out. Mm -hmm. So I didn't know that it was that. So stinging, yes. So stinging nettle or poach, as Jamaicans call it. Um, this is good for the prostate. It actually is another one of the great herbs that you can use. Um, you can get it in the supplement form. Or if you have coach, yeah, don't chop it out. <laughs> use it, right? Yeah, most country people don't like coach, you know. Is there a botanical name besides coach? Um, stinging nettle urtica dioica. Right, dioica. Or stinging nettle. OK. Yeah, it's stinging it. Um, sister. Yes, brother. Is it the one when it, when it touch you, well, you leave one little green something we stick up by you sometime? No, not that one. This one, when it touch you, you scratch down the place. It, the area that you get, it scratch, it's inflamed. It's, yeah, it's on, it. sorry, it's almost like a lice. So you have the grass lice that yeah the little um when you go in the in the against grass, um when I went to Caymanas River before it became developed, we went in the water and when we came back it had a lot of grass coming growing out of the water, but where sections of it was like separate and clear a bit clearish, but when you go in the water and come back you just start to itch like crazy and that don't have coach there but it had the grass lice. So it's almost that you can it's, you can hardly see the the little particles that would go into you to eat you. So I have an idea what you're talking, sis. Um, when you come out of the bush, 
there are like small, extremely small, um, like spikes. They're almost no, like not that one. How it that like the one that I'm talking about? If it catch you, you it stay catch. No, I know because I've had it. I've had it with me in the in the country. I've I've had <laughs> I've had that one and I itch for the days. Yes, man, it will you itch for days. Right, I know that one for sure. Thank you so much for that. Um, so natural ways to uh, um, another one is lycopene, and this is the orange pigment in the in fruits. So like a tomato. So men make tomato your best friend. You know, just cut it up. You can eat it raw, wash it up properly, eat it raw, and you're good to go. And they have they have lycopene supplements. So they have the powder, so you can get that one as well. Um, some other fruit that is uh rich in lycopene, watermelon, the grapefruit, which is the orange, the, the red grapefruit, papaya, mango, parmesan, persimmon, rose hip, guava, anything that looks are red, red orangey. All right. Yes, it's good for you. Right. So lycopene. It's found in, as I said, red fruit and vegetable, and it, it reduces the risk of or slow the progression of BPA. So just incorporate that in your diet. I think that's it. Oh, great. This is the exciting part. Yeah, the men are really excited about this part. I'm happy you're talking about this because a lot of times this is something that will sweep under the carpet. Everybody talks about breasts and cervical. But it's like men just leave her back. So yeah. bringing this out is very, very good. Thanks. Okay, you're welcome. So impotence is not something that you should be ashamed of um, as a man. Because normally men, they, they think so much of their erection. It's not anything that you should be ashamed of. Because even now, so many men approach Camille. They won't approach a woman. And they talk about you know, what can help them to get erected, right? So it's a big deal. So um, these are herbs that you, you don't have to reach the place where you're impotent. You can actually take these as supplements, right? So um, as I said before, many um, pharmaceutical drugs for BPH are the swelling of the prostate. These drugs cause impotence. So the men realize that when they start taking the thing for the prostate, they, they can't erect. It just, it just did, right? It's a side effect. So Damiana, Sister Sashoy, <laughs> Damiana, um, that's a very, very good one. You can get the supplement powder, right? So it's good, it increases libido and it helps with fertility. So for men and women who you want to, get pregnant and so on, Damiana is very good as well, but it, it strengthens the male um, erection, right? These, yes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, right? Okay, so much. Just found sting in Atlantic on Google and it's also good for arthritis. Yes, thank you so much. Um, the next two herbs are your and goat. Thank you. Um, your himbe and murapuama. You can get these at your health food store. Okay. I think this is the last. You can get these at your health food store. Your himbe, bark, and murapuama. These I tell you, um, you should get these, right? And you can take them with your Damiana and you're good to go. Um, some other ones that, you know, you can get supplements with all of them in it. Your Himbe, Murapoama, um, Damiana, and Horny Goat Weed, and L, L, R, R, L, Arginine, that's, that's the nature's natural Viagra, right? So I know there are other herbs out there, 
but these are the most powerful ones that have been studied. Right? So Damiana, Yohimbe, and Yohimbe Bark, and Mira, Mira Kwan. All right? And you can get the others with like LRG9 and others, right? So I think that's it. Any questions? I only have three minutes, about three minutes now. Any questions? No? Any questions online? No. Okay, great. I hope you were blessed and feel, please feel free to share. I'm just lost in my, sorry, I'm just lost in my little research tip in here. We're going in a whole lot of different cases. We mentioned if you're pregnant, you're not to breastfeeding, you're not to, you're to avoid it. And high blood pressure carries it up or lower it out. So diabetes and all of that. But so I'm just grateful because I have brothers and friends. Bless you. So Sister Sharice. Yes, um, you mentioned that increased estrogen could contribute to um BPH. Uh so so I'm trying to understand. So, so estrogen helps with growth. So is it that something special is in the prostate, prostate why it would cause, the, cause that area to grow in men versus other um, internal um, body parts? Okay, so the enzyme that is responsible for um, the conversion of testosterone to that hydrotestosterone, which causes the increase in the size of the prostate, it is also, um, it also converts to estrogen. It's also in the, the metabolic process of estrogen. So when you have too much estrogen in your blood or in your diet, then you produce more of this enzyme. And most of the herbs that are listed, it actually blocks the, or inhibits this enzyme. Right, so um, that is the reason. Also, when you have an increase in estrogen, um, there is an imbalance of uh, testosterone estrogen. And because of that, instead of truly expressing like other male things, male attributes or characteristics, then you more have female stuff like female growth. Um, like the growth of the prostate as well. I hope this helps. Got you. Got you. Okay. okay. You. Sister, right. is just a quick one. Mm -hmm. um, is there a way like you can share that document? Yes, I'll I'll share it in the Sabbath school um group. Thank you. Yes, you're welcome. All right then. Take care. Bye bye. Bless you. Happy Sabbath. Thank you so much, Sister Sharice, for that very well put together presentation. I'm sure that a lot of our males will find it very, very helpful. And continuing, we are now at our welcome and fellowship, and that will be done by Sister Genus. coming Caleb in her hand. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Oh, dear. <laughs> Good morning, Roxanne okay. and Caleb. All right. Happy Sabbath, everyone. No, it's not my baby. <laughs> one is, off, one off. This is Alan's baby. And he wanted, one to, he wanted to come and do the welcome and fellowship with me. Aww. Welcome, everybody. Welcome, everyone that's here at Solo Field. And we have some special guests all the way from Clarinon, the Williamson family, Mikaya, Ruthana, Ella Keneal. Sister Sharice, they're here all the way from Clarendon. And um, we have Josiah here. We have Sister Sashoy. We have the Allens. We have Sister Lee here with us. Sorry. 
All right, and my family is at home. Uh, Israel and Omar are at home. Welcome to you. Welcome to the Bows family, Sister Brown, Brother Davis, the Fagans. Welcome, welcome. Um, Brother Gregory Williams, I'm not sure if this is your first time on, but if it is, welcome and so great to have you. Yes, it is. All right. You. You're welcome. You're welcome. And Brother Kirk Queen Wright, good to have you with us. Brother Elaine, the Fruz, welcome. You want to come out of my house? You want to say something? No, yeah, translate, sister. Yeah, do the translation. Yeah, you're doing well. On his behalf. All right, all about Women's Expo. Who is that? All right, I'm not sure who that is. And you, Sister Lo, welcome to you. All well, right. thank you kindly, ma'am. Thank you kindly. And thanks, Sister, Caleb. Sister Ruffin, welcome to you. And I pray that today, pray that.